Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today we're going to talk about LED light burn on seedlings. I moved the lights up to 30 inches, or it's actually right about 32 inches, because this yellowing, which I had no idea what it was, you know, generally you don't get yellowing like this on seedlings unless they're waterlogged or you have some kind of a nutrient deficiency. It has, they have neither. I uh, took off all of the, the bottoms, the solid bottoms with no drain holes. So these are allowed to dry out pretty well. And the ones that improved were the ones that were taken out of here, out of this light. So that pretty much tells me that it's it's the light being at 24 inches, which is what they recommended. It was down right about here. So I'm pretty much positive that it was the lights that were causing the burn on these. And so I, I did a lot of research last night, um, especially with uh, pot growers as to light burn, um, basically because they post more stuff on it. Uh, the pot growers kind of stay up with the technology more than home gardeners. Let me open this. So they have generally a better idea what's going on with the indoor grow situation so this one here looked well not quite as bad as that one but it was looking pretty bad this tray i took out of here and it's been it's been out here for oh four or five days and it perked back up some of these where the apical meristem, the shoot, or the growth shoot, where that's damaged, I don't know if they're going to come back at all. But where, um, where the apical meristem is not damaged, I think they're going to do fine. Uh, one of the ways you could tell it's, if it's a nutrient deficiency or not is the lower leaves are affected first on a nutrient deficiency. With uh, scorching from the LED lights, it starts at the very tip and works its way down. So the area that's closest to the light is damaged. Obviously, some plants are stronger than others because this, uh, oh, what is this, um, coneflower? Yep. This purple coneflower, or pale purple coneflower, which has mostly been out here, is pretty much undamaged. I needed to bring it back in here because I can't put a, a lid on it anymore. So if this starts becoming damaged, then it's pretty obvious it's the light. But since I moved it up, it's probably not going to happen. Hopefully it's not going to happen. I'm kind of sad that these. this is my wife's favorite flower or one of her favorite flowers lupine and this is the first one that came up this this one right here was the first seed that came that sprouted and came up and just all of a sudden they got really damaged so i'm hoping they come back I'm, i'll probably shift that away from the light I also did a lot of, when I got the LED lights, I did a lot of research on it and like tree farms and uh, pot farms, a lot of people that grow indoors are switching over and they do have awesome light. It's much better than fluorescent, high pressure sodium, uh, metal halide, all the other ones. It's, it's a way better light because it has a complete spectrum. Fluorescent lights are basically red and blue, 
And I think I got that here somewhere. Yeah, they have, uh, this is the spectrum of these particular lights. It has white, um, which is uh, 6,000 to 6,500 K. It has red, blue, which is, this is what your, in, your uh, fluorescent bulbs would give you, just the red and the blue there. This includes white, infrared, ultraviolet, and orange. They, I believe it's infrared, or is it the UV? It's one of these you have to have for flowering, and I, I don't plan on flowering. Um, this, this is all getting planted out in the garden, but I guess if you're growing pot indoors, you need that. But anyways, this is from the manufacturer on on uh, Amazon okay and then this is what they show um, the light compensation point for this for this particular light which is not the light that I have is two feet so I, I probably could have figured this out if I well I don't know if I would have or not because using suggestions in their book, King LED User Instructions says hanging or hanging height. We recommend the distance between the light and the top of the plant is 24 inches height. And then it says adjust height according to desired coverage and how well the demand of par meeting the plant growth takes the increased intensity I don't know it's Chinese instructions I don't know what the hell that means but uh, or what the hell they're trying to say there but my guess is they're saying if if it's too intense and it's burning your plants raise it up so with a 1000 watt light they are basically saying 24 inches, which they recommend here, as just a base recommendation or a, a standard recommendation. They're recommending 24 inches, and then they have the hours on here, um, and they have more hours recommended than uh, a lot of the stuff I've seen online. But I actually decreased the hours a bit down to 14 hours and then raised it up to I, th I believe it's at 32 inches from the top of here up to here but then you got this so it's it's right about 30 inches so again we have 1000 watt and then they're saying here to put it at 24 inches or that's the optimal and then gotta go back a page or two okay here's the 1000 watt and you know and then it shows the par at um at 80 18 inches of height which is right here i don't know why they're showing that instead of the 24 but anyways, this is just a general comparison between the two. Um, where does this get us to? This gets us to 230. Uh, if you do the math, you do have to... You would obviously have to have it higher than 24 inches that they recommend just to start with. And then if these start to get leggy, growing towards the light then you could uh, gradually lower it down but starting at 24 inch starting at 24 inches with anything higher than a thousand watt LED light is gonna burn your plants I I wouldn't even try it so if you are buying these are very well made uh, fixtures it's got a heavy duty plate in there I think they show that I'll show all this stuff in the video it's got a heavy duty plate Where is that? 
Okay. Um, glass plate, and then it's got a heavy aluminum plate that uh, the lights themselves are attached to, and then two big puck fans blowing air out the top. When I set this up next year, I'm going to be putting it in room 13 over there, and I'll just make a tent, a grow tent. And I'm going to start this thing out like three feet above the plants and then put the heat mats on them. And, you know, kind of like the same thing as this, except I'll be able to control the heat in the room as opposed to trying to keep it warm in here with it getting 20 degrees at night and stuff. This is the only thing I could do this year um, because we have zero room in the house and the uh, shed is, is still under construction, so just no place to put plants. But anyway, um, some of the plants are looking great. Um, I thinned this. These were planted on 430, so they're two weeks old. That's what I got out of there. They, uh, it's like every seed. Uh, sprouted. This is the, just some burpy seeds from from the store in the seed aisle. Very high germination rate. You know, if I had to guess, I would say every damn one germinated. Uh, sky blue aster. This I just took out of there. I have to uh, start getting the taller ones have to go in there. I need ones that have I can put a lid on out here because I don't have enough room for them in there and it's been getting so cold at night I don't want them to uh, I don't want them to die from the cold but these these are doing terrible I might have to uh, revisit these next year and I get I, I believe it was the lights um, this had two blades of grass growing it. One looked exactly like a, a weed grass. And this one. So I kept this one and got rid of the other one. It looks like a little bit of mold on the surface. So I got a really, yeah, a little bit of mold right there too. Got to watch this so I don't get... Uh, gray mold. I can leave this stuff uncovered during the day, I believe. The high today is going to be 42 degrees, but it's probably, what is it in here? It says it's 69, but it, it's not. I, I have no coat on, but it's, it's chilly in here. And the heater just came on. This is set at, uh, this will come on at 70. So maybe this will warm up the whole place in here. Maybe not. I can't take the chance of leaving this closed during the day because if the sun comes out and hits this thing, the temperature rises so quick that being in, in a tent within a, a greenhouse, it can get way too hot in here too easy. That's another thing with with uh, LED lights. They say to not let the, the seedlings get too hot because the extra heat plus the light intensifies the effect. So try to keep it around 70, 75, I guess, and, and keep uh, the light high enough over your plants or you're gonna burn them. So, you know, it it's kinda odd, like this is recuperating right here. That one is recuperating. Some of them were yellowing and then they just turned back to green really fast. And some, I don't know if they just got so damaged that they're on their way out or or what the deal is, but some of these look really nice now. So, it, it, at some point soon, I'm going to have to thin this stuff out. 
and I there's no way I can put a cover on anymore. They're starting to touch the cover, so these came back. These these were actually the worst, and they're still not too great in the center, but they're definitely making a comeback here and there. So that'll about do it for this video. Um, next year, when I do my starts, I'm going to do an experiment with. I should probably try it with this uh, butterfly weed because it appears to be really sensitive to this light. I want to do a couple different heights away from the light and see where the sweet spot is and then try to try to keep the light at that distance. Maybe this King LED knows what that sweet spot is. I mean they made this this nice little graph here or maybe I can figure it out from the, the LCP yeah I I really don't know I'll have to I'll have to do a little more research on that but I really want to know what the what the sweet spot is for a 1200 watt and they really should have it just listed out right in here I mean put another another line on this and you know show what this the recommended starting height is and then go up or down from there if, if they start to show that uh damage high up on the on the plant where it's yellowing and then actually turning white you you got damage move it up if they're getting leggy this is actually getting a little bit leggy then bring it down so I'll contact, uh, what is it, King LED and see what they have to say about it. But if you are going to buy LED lights, beware. Uh, you have to have them high enough. It's not like uh, fluorescent lights where you put it down, you know, almost touching the plant. These are really powerful and can do some damage. They also do a lot of good though. Uh, the stuff I was reading on them uh, was from a tree farm and they did a ton of research on it. They have like these rotating beds that the, that the seedling trays are in and the lights above it. So they go around and around all day and uh, they talk about how much extra nutrition that the plants get from LED lights so they are a damn good thing but too much of a good thing is pretty dangerous so I'm gonna update this regularly and hopefully show how they look when they start healing from LED light damage so make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon so you receive notice when I post those videos Thanks for watching and have a great day.